Hey there! If you want to study deep reinforcement learning, don't go anywhere. You're in the right place. My name is Thomas Simonini, and I'm the founder of Deep Reinforcement Learning course with TensorFlow, which is a free series of articles published on FreeCodeCamp. So in this series of videos, we are going to focus on the implementation part with TensorFlow, while in the series of articles, we're going to focus on the understanding of the main architectures. So last time, we implemented a deep Q learning agent that is able to play Atari Space Invaders. However, we saw during the training that there was a lot of viability and the training was really slow. So today, we learn four new strategies that help us to improve our deep Q learning model. These four strategies are dueling deep Q learning, double deep Q learning, fix Q targets, and finally, prioritize experience replay. We will use these four new strategies to implement our new agent that will be able to play Doom. So because it's an improvement of deep Q learning, you must first master Q learning, deep Q learning. If it's not the case, please first read my articles about Q-learning and deep Q-learning and watch the video associated with them. The links are in the description below. And then you must master the four different strategies in terms of theory, thanks to my new article about improvement in deep Q-learning. As you can see, there is some improvement in the quality of our videos. First of all, the quality of the image with a new camera and a new green screen that help us to do incrustation. And secondly, we change a little bit the methodology. Instead of explaining the whole notebook, we'll explain how to implement each of these four strategies step by step. Okay? So as I said, today we'll implement a dueling double deep Q learning agent with prioritized experience replay and fixed Q targets that will be able to play Doom. So you're ready? Let's implement it. Do we have to? No. Then kiss my curvy butt goodbye. <laughs> okay, so today we'll implement a dueling double deep Q learning agent with prioritized exponential replay and fixed Q target that learns to play Doom. So, this is our agent playing Doom after three hours of training on CPU, not GPU. You can say, but Wait, this agent is not smart at all. And in fact, it's not really true. Because in the beginning of the training, our agent wanted to directly go to the vest but was always killed. So, in three hours of CPU, he understood that he must first kill the enemies in front of him. But sure, he's not 100% smart. Because he needs about two days of GPU to have an optimal score. So, what I wanted to say about that is that in the next architecture will be trained from the beginning to the end because they are very important architecture. A to C, PPO, PPO view transfer are really important architecture. So that's why I prefer to spend money and credits on the next architectures. You need to master this architecture even if there are not the state of the art algorithm. Why? Because the state of the art algorithm use a lot of elements of these architectures, of policy gradients and of deep Q learning. So it's really important to know how to implement them. Sure, I know you want to implement PPO, etc. But it's really important to first master the former architecture because the elements are useful for PPO. And it's like if you know you wanted to, to begin to learn to paint and you directly want to paint um, a painting like, like La Joconde, you know. That's not possible. You need to begin to do some simple things and then com add in complexity to your architectures. So the first step that we're going to do is implementing fixed queue target. It's the simplest thing, but help us to have less viability in the training. Okay, so just a recap. The idea of fixed queue target is to use two network. The first deep queue network that we will use to estimate the queue value. And the second target network that we'll use to estimate the TD target. Okay, both come from the same network, but have different parameters. So we create two networks, as I said, deep queue network and target network. Then 
because in fact at every two steps we need to update the parameters of target network with the parameter of DeepQ network. So we need to create a function that will handle this problem. So what we use, we use this function called update target graph. This is an implementation made by Arthur Giuliani. Arthur Giuliani made fantastic implementation in deep reinforcement learning. And today he works at uh, Unity and made a very good series of Unity agents that is able to play some simple games, but it's very fascinating. If you're interested about that, you just type Unity Machine Learning. We get the parameters we want, so the parameters from DeepQM network. We get the parameters of our target network, and what we do, we say for each variable from VARS, so from our DeepQ network, put them, copy them into the parameters of our target network. So we update the parameters of our target network using this function at every two steps. Okay? And as I said, finally, during the training, we calculate the TD target using our target network and update the target network with DeepQN network at every toe step. And we do that here. In fact, we tracked toe and we say if toe is superior of MAC toe, it, it means that we must update the parameters of our target network with DeepQN weights. So we call the function update target graph. So now we'll implement the double DPUN logic, which is pretty straightforward. The idea is when we're going to calculate the TD target, what we do, we use the DPU network to choose an action for the next state. And given that action, we'll calculate the Q value of taking that action at the next state using the target network. So in our case, we do that in a loop. What we do? First of all, we get the Q value for the next state using the DPQ network. We use the Q next state to select the best action to take. Then we calculate the Q target for all action at that state using the target network. And what we do here, we say that the target will be equal to the reward by plus discount rate by this target of the next state for the action chosen by the DeepQ network. So now we'll implement our dwelling strategy. The main difference is that we will have two streams, one that will output the value of being at that state, and the other that will output the advantage of each action given that state. Then, we combine them using a special aggregating layer that will output the Q value for each action at that state. So in terms of code, we just create two streams, one so it will be two fully connected layer for value, and two connected layer for advantage. Then we have the aggregating layer. Remember that we just can't add the output of the advantage and output of value because of the problem of identifiability. So we need to use this calculation that was found on the paper about dueling deep Q learning. So now that we just finished to implement the dueling system, we need to implement prioritize experience replay, which requires much more code and will be a little bit fancy, but it's really, really, really important to use it when you use dueling double deep Q learning. Okay, so now we're ready to implement prioritize experience replay. But first, I want to explain why we can't just use a replay buffer to do that. In fact, when we implemented experience replay, we just create a replay buffer where we add some new experiences. And then when we want to have a mini batch of experiences, we just randomly select experiences from it. But in the case of prioritize experience replay, we don't take the experiences randomly, or most of the time not randomly. We select them based on their prioritization score. It means that if we want to select these experiences, we need to order our array at each time step, each time we had a new experience, which is not efficient at all. The idea is then to use two elements. The first will be to use a binary tree data type. So in, remember that in binary tree, the idea is that the node can, la can have only two children. And in our case, it's a binary sum tree. It means that the value of the children are combined in the parent's node. The idea is simple. We will have two elements. First of all, we will have the sum tree, 
where each leaf of this entry contains a priority score of an experience and each leaf index corresponds to the data index and points to the experience that is stored in the data, data is an array. So we have on the one hand the array that contains the experiences and the other hand the sum tree that contains the priority scores. And each leaf index corresponds to the data index that corresponds to an experience in the data array. Okay? So I will not dive on all the detail of implementation of a sum tree because I already explained a lot in the notebook. But first of all, it was taken but modified from the implementation of Morvanzu that made very good implementation in deep reinforcement learning. Unfortunately, his course is in Chinese and I don't speak Chinese, but he made a very good implementation. So I just want to rapidly show each element. So first of all, so as I said, we construct this sum tree, which is a binary sum tree where a leaf contains a priority and a data array where index points to the index of leaves. So the first is init, where we initialize a tree with all nodes equal to zero as we can see here, and initialize the data, so the array, with all values equal to zero. Then we have this function that add our priority score in the sum tree leaf and add the experience data. And remember, because we had a new priority score, we need, because it's a sum tree, we need to update the parent nodes. So this function does that. And finally, we have the get leaf that when we want to get the leaf index priority value of that leaf and experience associated with that index. And then we get total priority that returns the node, the highest node, because the highest node is equal to the sum of its children node, but them equal to the sum of their own children nodes, etc. etc. So thanks to that, we'll get the total priority score. Okay, so now we can create our memory object. Remember that we don't use DQ anymore for a simple reason. Because at each time step, DQ changed the index of all the elements. Because at each time step, when it had a new experience, it removed the whole this experience. So it's not efficient at all. So what we do first, we need to create the hyperparameters. Remember that when we want to sample some experiences using prioritized experience replay, we need some hyperparameters. The first is E, that is the hyperparameters that we will use to avoid some experiences to have zero probability. In fact, E is a constant. Then we have A, that is the hyperparameter that we use to make a trade-off between taking only experience with high priority and sampling randomly. And finally B, that we will use to calculate the important sampling weights. And remember that this B must be increased during the training. That's why we have that here. In fact, it increments at each sampling from this value. Okay, so the first element is that we init. In this case, we generate our sum tree and data array by instantiating the sum tree object. Then we have the store function. And something important to consider that I read in the paper is that each new experience has a score of max priority. In fact, each new experience will have a score of max priority and then this score will be improved when we use the experience to train our deep QN because then it calculated the TD error so we'll improve our priority score, etc. Et but when we had a new experience, we must say that this score is equal to max priority. Okay, so now we're ready to sample. First of all, we create elements that will contain, first of all, our experiences mini batch, our index, and our important sampling weights. Okay? So here, first of all, we calculate the priority segment because, as explained in the paper, and you should read the paper, is that to sample a mini batch of n size, the range 0 to priority total is divided into n range. We call that priority segment, so here. Then what we do, we increase our B hyperparameters because I explained we must increase it at each sample of a new mini batch. Remember that the B hyperparameters is an important sampling hyperparameters that have an initial value which is 0.4 to 1. Okay, and at each sampling we increase plus 0.001. Okay. So here we're calculating the max weight that we use when we calculate the important sampling weights. So then what we do, we saw that a value must be uniformly sampling for each range using the priority segment. So we get a value for each range, a random value for each range. And then using that value, we select experience that correspond to each value. So what we do, we use tree.getValue, which returns the index of the data, the priority, 
and the experience. Then we can calculate the importance sampling weights as explained in the paper, this is the calculation, and we divide it by max weights. So dividing by max weight assures that the weight will not be higher than 1. And finally, when we calculate the TD error, etc., we can update the priorities on the tree using this function, batch update. So that's all for today. You've just implemented an improvement of our deep Q learning agent that is able to play Doom, which is fantastic. Remember that you must train this agent on GPU. If you don't have GPU, you can use GPU services such as Microsoft Azure or Google Cloud. Both offers credits for new users. As always, don't forget to try to implement the code by yourself. Try to change the code, the architecture, the hyperparameters, the environment, experiment. Experimenting is the best way to learn. My code is not perfect. You can improve it. And I push you to do that because it's really important to try to improve the architecture because it will help you to make better AI. So I hope you like this video. If you have some feedbacks, advice, or questions, please write them in comments below. Next time, we'll implement a really important architecture, which is Advantage Actor Critic. It's part of what we call Actor Critic Methods. Actor Critic Methods combine policy-based reinforcement learning methods and value-based reinforcement learning methods. But we'll explain that next time. And it's really important that you'll master this architecture because it's a base of the state of the art algorithm. So next time, we'll implement an agent that will be able to play the famous Genesis or Mega Drive in Europe game, Outrun. And something really important, next time, we'll train our agent from the beginning to the end because we'll work with architecture that will be very important. So we need to train it from the beginning to the end. So, See you next time. So please subscribe and follow me for more deep reinforcement learning videos. And don't forget to like this video. If you like my articles and my videos, you can also support me on Patreon. That's all for today. See you next time. A bientôt. Keep learning and stay awesome.